uh, Greenback, uh, you guys can take over my screen. By the way, just uh, um, gonna explain a few few teams. Uh, they ask us, hey, what's uh, like a midterm presentation uh, template? Uh, so we created the template. So after all the company, you guys uh, finish the pitch today. We're gonna we are going to explain the the criteria or some midterm presentation. And then next Friday we do not have a pitch practice this time. However, the midterm presentation is gonna be. Uh, quite early morning in the US, um, like a late evening in uh, uh, in Europe, also like a Japan as well. So like, uh, please make sure for the current lesson, all right? Uh, Greenbook, you guys can uh, take over my screen. I guess we haven't decided who will go this week. <laughs> Oh yeah? Anyone, anyone can start. <laughs> I could try to do it. <laughs> um, should we should we present or can we just like go without the material? Uh if you do have a material, probably like a better to do it. If what, sorry? Uh, if you do have a slide, probably you can better to use it. Okay, Asma, can you add our slides? Like the last ones that we used? Yeah, I can uh, add the slides that I made for last week's presentation. We can go over those, let me add them. Maybe just share the link and I can also do that. Oof. All right. Um, yeah. Sorry. Just, uh, Sorry, this is a mess. I don't like it, doesn't let me share my screen. Okay. I can try to share it if you want to present it, and then I can click through it. Yes. Sorry for wasting your time, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, if, uh, um, if it's gonna uh, take more time, uh, seems like, you know, uh, Sun Davis, they are ready to pitch. Oh yeah, now uh, ask me you share the screen. Okay, let's start to do it. And now I'm gonna like a taxi, like a 10 minutes on her, last minutes and last 30 seconds, all right? Mm -hmm. So you can, you can see the uh, five minutes time over there. Well, thank you everyone for your patience. Um, today, our team would like to present Green Book to you, which is a social networking app for plant enthusiasts. Um, could you go next, Tesma? 
so we've created Green Book with the idea of helping people who either have never grown plants before or have done that and struggle with their journey. Green Book aims to provide people with both the informational support as well as community support that is often necessary to create long lasting habits like taking care of plants. In creating our, in creating our app, we're thinking of two key target personas, which are the people who are already power, um, power plant experts who could give advice to other people in the community, who could share with their wisdom, support, motivation, um, to people who are just starting, um, who are our target users. So here we have Justin, who <laughs> might have killed every plant he ever had, um, but he discovered that planting is a huge trend and he seems to resonate with it to a certain extent. We've actually found uh, through our user interviews that this thing is surprisingly um, popular among youth who didn't really think about themselves as like connected to nature. Um, but after like seeing TikToks, they decided to try once and then their aspect of like social accountability kicked in where they shared what they're doing with their friends and their friends kept asking them about how their plans are doing and then they felt like more obligated to keep going. Um, and now they like got sucked in, into that culture of let's take care of plants and get more plants and have like an aesthetic design from their apartment. Um, so one approach of our app is to think about long-term behavioral change that we can create um, other than providing, for example, inf informational solutions that is common to all of the solutions out there in the market. We're thinking about other different ways to incorporate behavioral science to actually make sure that people continue to have this um, to have this behavior of growing plants. Um, and for that, we have thought of different ways on how to improve one's perception of their self-efficacy. So perhaps like forums where people can uh, share about their struggles and understand that it's totally okay to like not succeed with growing plants and get support from other people to for that to improve their belief in their ability to continue to grow plants in the future. Could we go to the next slide, please? So some of our main features would be like an easily accessible planting advice, a lot of content related to planting. Uh, specifically, we'll be focused on geo, um, geo local, sorry, prioritizing the content by the geographical locations of the users, um, as well as trying to add in the community elements at different levels. So not only community, but also probably like at the app level, trying to show how many users around the world are trying to um, use our app for similar purposes um, and inspire the dialogues between different communities and planting. So our monetization strategy is partially relied on the freemium AI advisor. We're, we're currently reconsidering that strategy and that is because upon a more thorough market research, we have found that users have, there's, there's not necessarily like a price point that would be, that would allow for a meaningful scaling of the company um, and that the users would be okay with paying for. So for example, most of the current solutions at the market are priced at around $3. Um, out of those $3, 30% are going to the app store um, as the fee for being on their platform. Um, and then a lot of times when the app, for example, has a free trial, people would use the free trial uh, for seven days and then just not pay and if they are paid with and if they're hit with the in uh, with the immediate paywall they will stop um they will just like not continue with using the app so giving the the typical um conversion rate of like app users to paid app users is two percent it would require a lot of a lot a lot of people for us to gain to like to get to an any meaningful scale before we can actually generate revenue that 
that can keep this company growing. So we've thought of shifting a little bit towards the store model, like the marketplace model. Um, and that is specifically because the value of the US, at least the US market for the gardening and planting, for the gardening equipment and planting is around $15 billion. Uh, the global one is $83 billion. So there is a potential to scale. And we thought it really aligns with our mission to help people and enable them to grow plants. So we're potentially thinking of providing our freemium AI expert for free um and making it a completely free app and then just with that having as a a little bit of a unique advantage that it would bring more people to our app as well as people being more um open to some of the mistakes that we might do and some of the like technological imperfections that they um get encounter in the beginning of their use of green book um and then the store is just something like an additional enabler of them to to get to the planning journey, to, to, to get advanced with their planting journey, um, instead of something that like prevents them from moving forward. So for example, a paywall for the AI expert. Um, so those are the updates from us so far. Um, please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you. Cool, uh, that was uh, seven minutes and uh, 40 seconds. So let's take uh, two questions. Just like one quick feedback um, before anyone asks. Um, when you make the slide, right, just think about, no, you don't need to worry about like a design. You, you can think about what's the one message you want to tell one slide, right? Uh, each message ideally has like one specific like, keyword or like one main message that you want to explain to audience. Um, and the rest of the information, usually if you try to like put it to a lot of information, it is very difficult to finish within five minutes, but usually like, even like in you know, a pitch competition, it has like a three minutes pitch and the five minutes pitch is actually like a long, long one. So you guys can start to think about it. Uh, yeah, let's take a two questions. Uh, go ahead, Johannes. Just, just a question to you. Uh, I'm thinking it, it's gonna be five minutes next week also, right? Yes, it is. And uh, how has uh, companies done in the past? Have they had one pitcher or have they, uh... Yeah, all been talking in the pitch. Uh, it's it's up to you guys. Like you know, if you guys want to like divide it like side by side, you guys can do it. Or like if like you know one specific person just wanted to go through all the slide, that's fine too. It's up to you guys. Yeah. Again, just five minutes pitch and five minutes to get you on there. And then I'm gonna explain for the, the format later too. Uh, go ahead, Anna. Oh, I was just curious, like, who are the people that are going to be present um, to like next week and how like high stakes this presentation is compared to our final presentation, for example? Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a, uh, the question. Uh, yesterday we had a faculty meeting and um, basically, like, you know, the audience is going to be uh, this time, as it is like a midterm presentation, uh, basically like alumni uh, from uh, AI Labs, that's gonna include like a Frank, Chris, uh, two of them, uh, they joined the Biasite chat event. And another one is also uh, Nikel. Uh, she went to, uh, she joined this program, first program, and then she's working for SoftBank right now. Also like a members from uh, Carnell. And then Nemo-san, he do have anyone besides for uh, these uh, people. You could share your list too. Uh, yeah, uh, I think I think that that uh, uh, that the people who is joining for this uh, midterm presentation is as uh, I said. Um, just now uh, arranging a schedule with the uh, people from the funding uh, uh, venture team from people, but uh, now I'm still uh, considering whether they will uh, they need to attend for this time or not. I mean that. <laughs> It's, uh, it's according to the you mean the each team's presentation. Yeah, they tend to know more about uh, whether the uh, product will match the user needs and uh, where is the market. So if you are coming to that stage, I think that it is nice for you to get the feedback from uh, capitalists. Right, uh, let's yeah. take uh, Asma's question. 
Yeah, I was curious whether it's more going to be a pitch or whether it's also expected to do some demo of a product and whether we, because uh, I think it would be interesting and cool to, for instance, show like a better version of our app or some type of uh, run through of the product besides just like pitching it in a presentation form. Uh, yeah, so it's it's supposed to be like a pitch because like in you know, a presentation, it's again, you're going to like explain all the details. But thing is, again, this is the uh, pitch format. And then part of that, uh, it has the uh, product uh, demo part too. So you guys probably need to explain either uh, how product it works. If you have like a prototype that you can show it, if you don't, if you do not have like launch uh, product, or you can put it into like a design too. All right, cool. Uh, Cool. Yeah, let's take, sorry, let's take a two questions from uh, uh, Father Greenbeck. Anyone has any questions? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Anna. It's not a question, but like if no one has any questions, perhaps you could give like a feedback on our presentation and the pitch itself. Like what are the parts that you found interesting? What are the parts that you found boring? Like what are the parts we should focus more on versus not? Um, if you have any ideas like this, those also could be quite valuable. Sure, like I'm happy to do it. Um, do you mind sharing the screen, please? Usually like a five minute speech, um, when I was a founder also, you know, I listened to a bunch of the companies speech, also even like help the, the startups, early stage companies, how they divided their time, right? Usually two minutes and a half problem statement, also be like, you know, how product works, right? And rest of like a two minutes and a half, that's gonna include like attraction, business model, market, team, fundraising. These the, the like a business side of information. So two minutes and a half, two minutes and a half, like a fast second of two minutes and a half, you need to clearly explain, articulate um, what's the problem, who has a problem, like, you know, who's like a persona, and then you need to clearly explain what's the problem, and then what's the solution and how product it works. That's you can think about kind of like a two minutes and a half, even like you know, probably from two minutes and a half, like a three minutes, because like the rest of the information is like a quite simple, like attraction, we have a client 100 users, market size, it's like a 20 video, it's like a growing like a 50% month over month. It's gonna reach out to like a 30 million bro by like a 2025 and right? stuff, right? So each like this slide is like a quite simple to explain. So like a more like all these states companies, the most important thing is the who has a problem, what is a problem, why this is a problem, what could be solution, and how your product like works. That's it. That's like a you need to clearly explain um for the, the pitch. And then uh, yeah, sorry. Okay, can you go back to like a fast slide, please? Oh, for the fa fast slide. Is it the first slide? Oh, okay. Yeah, Greenberg. So usually like this is, it's considered as like a title slide. The most important thing is that, that you need to show is your company's name and sub's logo, right? And then one line of the product, Greenberg is XYZ for somebody to do something. That's usually like a described as a one liner. So from like a here, you can explain who's gonna be ideal customer and users and then and then what they're gonna do, right? So you have like a product explanation, you have like a persona, what's like a product usage too, right? Another one is the, if it's gonna be like, you know, the web service, you can put it into like a PC and the logo, uh, sorry, like an image. And then if it's gonna be like a mobile, you can put it to like a design on iOS and Android. And then that gives you like an idea for the audience, how, what type of like a product you guys going to build, right? That's the important information for the uh, title side. You guys don't need to like actually like take a take a note because I do have like a format and I'm happy to share with you guys too. Right, that's like a, a title slide. The next one, 
Uh, next slide. Yeah. Team members, okay, that's going to. Uh, the problem statement, it is so easy to not to kill a plant. It is even more difficult to get this course of food. Yeah, it's a, because like, this should be like a problem statement too, right? But thing is already you put it into like a green book, provide its users with the boss knowledge to help plants. Uh, you don't you don't have to do it because like, again, probably you're going to explain what's the solution, how green book works too, right? If you like, you know, put it to like, you know, all the time, like what's in your product and then that's going to be like a redundant and it's quite easy to take more time for the pitch. So you just need to like clearly explain what's the problem, right? And then here's a persona. And then probably the like next slide. And then Catherine and Justin, right? And then what's the difference? And then like and how, how, how's there like a clearly uh, did that? Like what second though? What's the, they are like a general situation when they face the problem, right? That's you need to explain. Still like this is kind of like a breakdown of the like a problem statement. And then what's the general situation? Of the each person or two, right? But Catherine, she is like a power user. I mean, probably like, you know, like a probably like a, you can say like she she loves like a plant, so like she's like a gardener. Another one is Justin, like she's uh, he's like a millennial or Gen Z. He lives in like New York and he started to spend like a money and time for like a you know, growing product. However, it is quite difficult for him to do it. And then why this is like a problem is that you know, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, like uh, probably like, you know, from this, this one is the creating long uh, lasting behavior changes. It is a part of the, your uh, mission statement or like, is it the product or solution? For me, like this is like, it sounds like you know, the mission statement a vision you guys want to achieve. The, uh, the slide post. I would argue that it's both uh, part of the problem statement because the issue is that there is no behavioral change often involved in this type of apps, but then it's also part of the product because it's a value proposition. Like the way this app will help people is by creating long lasting behavioral change. So uh, it's both part of the product and the problem statement, like what it's actually solving through the product. Right. In that case, um, usually, right, it's. Um, for the like, you know, problem statement, if you wanted to solve like a client, like, that's the answer of like a why now situation, like you know, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, like how plants behavior, like how people started to grow plants and how people start to spend more time. And then like what's happening to them, right? And then you can deep dive to the like, problem and then you can bring the example as a persona. Catherine and Justin, they live in like in a big city. Another one is like, you know, she just bought a house in Miami, right? And then that's, you can use the example. And then um, Green Book, uh, Green Book is a behavior science to help users succeed. Um, yeah, it's the, what's the long, one liner of uh, your product? How you describe like a Green Book, you can ask me. What's a Green Book? It's a social network uh, for plant enthusiasts. Yeah, in that case, probably you need to like, clearly explain on that one, right? Yeah, and then, What's the main features? We have like a three main features, and then you can explain like a feature one, feature two, like a feature three, two, right? And monetization, like a free premium AI yeah, Pfizer stuff, that's probably you need to put it into like a price. Ideally, how much you're gonna charge, right? If you're gonna charge like $10, that's fine. Uh, next one. Because these are like, you know, features and these are uh, monetization too, right? Monetization store. Um, is that the... Yeah, I remember, like, sorry, like, you know, I was uh, checking the timer. The thing is, the, you spend like a lot of time to explain like, this slide. That's the impression I got it. Uh, what, what you wanted to say from like, this slide? What's the main message from this slide? I'll oh, go ahead, Anna. Yeah, I think the the main message was explaining what the new business model is, or like what is the new emphasis in the business model is, and then that is towards the monetization store and like the marketplace. But I think the 
the most time I spent is not necessarily like explaining about the marketplace, but more why we decided to switch from the freemium AI advisor to the marketplace. Um, is that something that you think we should drop? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's like a difference between like a pitch and presentation, right? Presentation is you need to explain all the detail, but thing is like a pitch is like, you know, again, if you're like a pitching to investors, you need to explain everything, all the details, right? Why you are shifting from the AI to like the marketplace. If this is a business model, we are building like a marketplace for the seller and buyer who's going to be the seller. We are like a bringing everyone become like, you know, flower shop or like a garden designer or anyone can sell any of the plants and then buy your side. Right. For example, or if you're going to take like you know, each transaction, you're going to take a 3% like a commission fee. That's basically you need to explain too. So it's usually, I remember like when I was a founder, um, I, I made a like a similar mistake, but thing is like, you know, I'm not sure I understand. All right, thank you. Thank you, Theory. Um, yeah, I understand, like I remember, um, instead of like a print design, just put it to title and then what's the main message you want to tell. You don't need to, you don't need to put it to any of the design, just title slide, what you want to tell. You just can write that, right? As long as story is like a clear enough, after after that you just can put it into like a design. It's gonna be kind of like, you know, it's much more. Um, it gives you like a much like a flexibility, and in the end, it's gonna be like a much faster process to improve your main story, right? But that's why we like you know always try to emphasize: don't worry about design. As long as story is good, that's like you know, good enough, honestly speaking. And then for the midterm presentation. Uh, we're gonna explain you later. I think is that if it starts like a faster, I'm happy to explain you guys uh, right now because it seems like everybody has a question. The thing is again, we do have like a five minutes pitch. Let me share actually the, the, the screen. Can you guys see my screen right now? Right. So this is a midterm presentation format. Uh, what is a midterm? Uh, the team has worked on their ideas for the past five, uh, past like four weeks right now. This is a checking point for the teams to present your ideas to other audience. And it is very important for the teams to have a successful outcome to get feedback from judge and the commentators too, right? And you guys have died and audience is alumni, also like a current members. And presentation format. So like a service name, this is again, it, it is considered as a title site. You need to like describe your product using a one liner. Add it to like an image if you have it. And then if you have like a logo, just add it to there too. So again, one liner is the like a green book is X for somebody to do something. All right. If it is like a social media, green book is a social media for millennium, like you know, people who live in like you know the big city to share information, for example. That's like it gives you the idea who's gonna be personal, what's the main usage of your product too, right? And then uh, target user and a customer, describe user and a customer, example, Sarah does something at somewhere. And then how life is X, Y, Z, high interest, uh, Y, and Z, right? So you need to explain the general idea about your uh, uh, persona. And then what's the problem that's like she's facing too, right? And then when Sarah does something, she faces the problem. And then why now? Describe why this is a problem, why this is the right moment to tackle this problem. If you have done like a user interview, you can add it to like existing like a solution tool. That's like you know, your user they are using right now. If you're doing paying money, you can say like they are paying like fifty dollars. However, it doesn't solve so it doesn't solve the problem because reason is you just can list up to right. And then product uh, this should be like you know, the solution uh, to the problem. And then you don't need to present any technical part like architecture algorithm or AI model because again. This is a product, it, you just need to explain your product works as a solution to solve the problem, right? And then from here, uh, you can add it to like you know, probably like the features of the product. If like a green book case, if it is like in social media, you can probably like, list up probably the three main features that a user they are going to do. It. And the benefit, what, what is the benefit that users can get it? Uh, we'll get via your service. A quantitative or qualitative, this is like faster, cheaper, and better, and improving experience and fun, right? Because ideally, you're like a solving problem, you know, ideal benefit and the value 
that's they are going to get it from your service. And traction, what you guys have done so far, describe pre-launch or post-launch feedback in your quantity well. If you have done like a number of the user interviews, that's you can add it. Number of the product tests, if you have time, you can add it. Number of the survey, if you have time, that's you can add it. If you get any of like, you know, sign up, that's you can add it too, right? So basically you are like, a, you are showing that uh, there is a needs from the market already, right? That's most important message of the traction side. Also like basically you can say, you are like a telling your team has a strong execution skill because usually like a startup, they are going to wait uh, by the time they are going to launch a product too, right? So that's the, the things you can add it to here. The inside, if you learn something, that's you can add it to. If not, um, that's uh, fine. And last one is a milestone for the rest of the product. What are you going to do like a less than six to seven weeks too, right? That's you can probably add it to like a product side and business side, right? Product side, probably you can add it to like a model. We are going to launch our MVP. And then for the mark at the business side, well, I guess, sorry, the product side and product distribution side, and then product side, where you're gonna build it, and then how long it's gonna take time, we need to launch product. For the product distribution side, you can say we are planning to, we already have like a 10, a list of the Facebook group. After we launch it, we are going to like, you know, we are going to get a feedback from the potential user and the customers. So that's like a five minutes, oh, sorry. I didn't know that there is the animation here. Yeah, product is a product roadmap, a data acquisition plan, for example, in the business side, how to get your fast fast fast. Because for the business side, no matter what you're gonna do, it is very important to get uh, your fast customers. If you cannot get it, it's kind of like a pointless. So don't think about like all the like, you know, kind of like a fancy marketing plan. Just like a simple way, like, you know, it's better to like, you know, ask yourself how you can get your fast customer users, right? And the team, uh, you can add it to your uh, team's members background, highlight of the skill, achievement, why your team is the, why your the team is the, to, to solve this problem, either this slide at the beginning of the slideshow or at the end. That's probably like in you know, a green book's case, you can add it to like a slide on the, the second page, right? Either way is fine. If you have done like many of the research, you can say we have done, for example, the week week probably like two, uh, probably like, you know, for the office hour, we talked about the find the right problem, right? So one of the companies, he's a tiny before, patent lawyer before. I'm oh, sorry, like probably like, that's like we didn't use it. So the one company, he used to be like a lawyer. Now he's building a legal tech. So like bringing the, his experience as a lawyer, that keeps like enough like a warm-up story to the audience too, right? So if you guys have done any of the research or work before, or like a, the, the topic that you guys are tackling right now, probably it makes sense that you move up this like a team site, in a uh, team site into the beginning of the pitch. If not, you can add it to on the end of the uh, pitch. I think that's the, and then Q&A is like a five minutes. So like an up to here, it's gonna be like a five minutes. From here, it's gonna take a five minutes here and there. Anyone has any question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the breakthrough, Jen. I really appreciate it. Um, I was wondering to what extent should our presentation be more like a breakdown of what we already have? And to what extent should it be more aspirational? Like this is where we're heading in the future. Uh, should we talk about it or should we just focus on what we have right now and what the product is right now? Uh, that's like a part of the milestone too, right? So you can explain what you guys gonna do the rest of the program. Rest of like a seven weeks, what you guys going to have it. So mainly like, you know, the, as it is like a midterm presentation, you just need to like, you know, explain or pitch what you guys have done. And then another one is what you guys gonna do the rest of the program. Stan Davis, uh, Skepsi, um, do you guys have any question? I mean, if you guys have any question, like, I'm happy to take a uh, look look at your slide like next week too. The thing is, like, no worry about like making the fancy slide. 
it's seriously like, you know, you just can put it, all the information into like a Google site and then just like you know, run on like, a, what's the main message you want to tell on the one site, right? Inside, traction, the benefit, product, why not? But it, it's easily like, you know, it takes a lot of time and practice, um, but I like, you know, it's uh, you just need to like start to do it. The thing is, as it is like a midterm presentation, a midterm pitch, it is like a totally fine. You're just gonna practice because the main thing is that the the, the the final presentation too, right? So final pitch, that's the probably you know, investors from deep or also like you know, other people from software, they are going to listen to like the pitch too, right? And then we did the same format last year too. And then final present, uh, final pitch, it has a different type of like a format. It's gonna be completely like a more like a pitch type of, pitch type of the format. That's for example, like Johannes you share with me like this morning. That's like a slightly different, but thing is like, as this is a midterm presentation, you don't need to explain all the market size, who you have business model, what's the go-to market structure and stuff too. Just try to explain what's the problem, who has a problem, and why this could be solution, how your product works, and then what's the insight you can you have got it so far, right? That's basically our main focus, should be like it so far. So Nemosan, do you have any comment that you want to add? Um no, uh, no. and uh, please refer to the uh, my comment when I uh, posted um, I think the one or two weeks ago is a emotion about the emotional goal. That's for, yeah, that's all for all comment for my uh, from me today. Cool. Yeah. Uh yeah, let's uh let's move to, in that case let's move to uh next uh tip. Green book, you guys can choose a next company. Anna or Asma or Anna? Yep. Yes. Jack and Haitha, may you want to go? All right, stand <laughs> yeah. Do you see the presentation? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Your screen sharing is paused. I can see a part of the screen right now. Yeah, I see half of it. Yeah. Half of it. You, I'm not sure you, you don't see the whole, <laughs> but the whole slide, no? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just can see like this part, you know? Oh yeah, now yes. There you go. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hmm. Because I was thinking I wanted the presentation view, but maybe it's impossible with the... Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway, I can do like this. Yeah, and now you see it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think this presentation is. I'm, I'm taking some slides from our appendix because it would be nice with some feedback on on those slides, and um, because it's a little bit about uh, the market, which yeah, you just said, Jim, that it's for for later. But um, yeah, we're we're interested in thinking about. Uh, where we would like to, to go with this. So, yeah. Um, and going back to the, to the start the problem, the main problem that we're trying to solve is that uh, hotels have unprofessional and too few images. So if you look in the bottom left, that's actual photos that we have found on, on booking.com. So people are taking get the images uh, photos, like stock images, and they have images that doesn't really you know, it doesn't really seem like a place where you would like to travel, although it's probably a nice hotel. Um, and at the same time, hotels uh, need to find more content because they have Instagram accounts and Facebook accounts and they have booking profiles where they need a lot of photos because our research also has shown that uh, the more photos you have, the more bookings you get, basically. So it's, it's uh, definitely something that hotels are going to want to spend more money on. Um, and at the same time, they get a lot of contacts from influencers, uh, but only 10% of those 
uh, are actually worth investigating to partner with. And usually influencers want uh, free nights, basically. So what we're building is a space where these two actors can find each other. So it's an app where content creators and hotels um, are being matched and the, the images and videos are being facilitated to the hotels. And then later we might have a demo time. Um, but instead I would like to move on to, to this, um, which is, uh, we talked to Nonstop Dan, who is a former Minerva. He has a lot of subscribers on YouTube and he's basically a travel, uh, yeah, travel YouTuber. So he was quite perfect as a potential customer, like user profile. Um, but it turns out maybe he wasn't in a way because he uh, says that, yeah, he informed us basically that hotels receive a lot of requests to collaborate with influencers. They turn down a lot of requests. Um, and influences are important for hotels and the hotels understand that, but it's really difficult to understand, you know, if it's worth it or not. Uh, for him, a pain point when it comes to collaborating is transaction, because there is no clear framework of how uh, the money should be transferred. And often he takes the risk um, and it can, you know, it can be a lot of money and sometimes the hotels or the, or the brands, they don't pay, basically. Um, but he also says that uh, this app that we're building is probably more focused on, you know, everyday photographers, uh, photographers, you know, that usually posted on Shutterstock, for example, because they can sell the photos much cheaper um, and they can put more energy and time into the photos compared to influencers that basically, you know, they take one picture and they post it on their own social media. And what we want to do instead is that and photographers take take pictures and they can uh, uh, use it to market the hotel uh, on the mark on the hotel's side. And yeah, the global market of hotels is extremely large. And this four billion is the how much hotels put on marketing in the world, and it's quite much money. Um, and uh, it's it's expected to keep growing over the coming years. Uh, quite quickly, uh, especially after the pandemic. And it's uh, extremely important with images, as I talked about before, because uh, images influence 54% of travel decisions and uh, a lot of people find their hotels through social media. So hotels will need to invest a lot of more money into this um, and uh, because it's, it's, a, you know, it's a competitive market, right? And there are many different hotels that you can choose. And at the same time, the, the content creator market is also growing quickly. Uh, it's not as large as the hotel market, but, but still it's, it's expanding very fast. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a high annual growth rate. And compared to, for example, Shutterstock, where you can buy photos for, for 20 cents to $10. Um, yeah, we're gonna do something that photographers can get paid more from basically but i think that we're gonna talk more about that next week so yeah i think this is what we want to show for now cool um how about you're gonna show the demo to everyone there um i think that we are not gonna show the demo next week i think we're just gonna have photos of the uh, of the app instead oh yeah okay i see um, yeah, do you think? You know, um, yeah, that, that's like also fine too. It's not necessary to have like a product demo. The thing is, do you have anything that you, you can show the, your product, how it's going to look like? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to share the, the screen about your product? Uh, yeah, or uh, Jack, do you have it accessible? It, or otherwise we have a video on our Slack. Yeah, my branch is currently riddled with bugs. Um, so unfortunately I can't show it. Um, 
right now the live version but i believe we do have videos on slack um not sure how accessible that is in front of a live audience i can look if i can put it up here okay Uh, if that's faster, I, I can share like my 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 screen on Slack. The product demo that you guys posted on the Slack, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe do that because I was trying to download it, but it seems like it's not right, right. working. Cool. Can you guys see my screen right now? Yeah. All right. So yeah. this is the one, you guys, a demo. And I think Kaitham wrote it also. It's a little bit buggy in this video, but it looks nicer in the, on the computer. Yeah, it has changed a lot since then, actually. Um, currently, the user um, can post um, content. Um, uh, the manager will be able to view the content currently as we speak. Um, and yeah, we're just kind of like trying to make that, um, um, that navigation seamless. Um, and yeah, that should be ready by the midterm review. I see. Um, yeah, one, one feedback about uh, product is um, usually again, taking a demo uh, is uh, slightly uh, difficult to explain entire experience. So like you can add it to like, you know, highlight like a main, like a two to three features for like, for example, the Vista site, they can find uh, like a product, you know, find the hotel, like, you know, the check the like, details, right? The check the, the picture and stuff too, right? And then, for the content creator side, uh, like they can post, uh, post the picture and get paid by hotels, for example. Right? Do you use like a you know, small, like, you know, it's not small, sorry, main key feature, you just can like put it into the uh, just uh, screen image. That's even like you know, good enough to explain how your product works too. So um, that's like a problem you guys can uh, do it too. Yeah, because making a video also like, it takes extra time too, right? So just like, you know, make the like, you know, what's the main feature that you wanted to explain? Here's gonna be like a demo, how hotel they're gonna use it and then how's the creator side. They can have like a three things, one first image and get paid for example, right? And that, that, that's like two to three features probably you can add it on the slide here. That's probably like, clear enough to explain how your product works. Uh, let's take a one question if, you, if anyone has it. Uh, yes, go ahead, Asma. Yeah, that looks very beautiful. I like the integration. Um, my question is, and I feel like this is something that we've been over multiple times, but I am curious whether you have any new breakthroughs. Um, how is the ownership of the pictures going to work? Because I know that within artistry and just like uh, the creative, uh, like with photography, um, copyright and just like ownership is a big issue. And we also see that with NFTs and things like that. So uh, what is your solution there? Who at the end of the day owns these pictures? Yeah, um, if I could take that, I think that's an interesting question. We um, are, are also considering many options. Um, first, we are thinking of decentralizing it and leveraging the existing um, blockchains, um, as you've said. Um, so that's on the menu. Um, 
Um, but in terms of just ownership um, per se, when you post that picture, you um, own the picture the same way an Instagram user owns the picture, right? Um, the only difference is that there's the ability for the hotel to also add that picture to their profile. You still own it, but you can make money from it. So it's still yours, um, but then it's kind of like a shared asset um, that you can use to also make money from, if that makes sense. But it's still, it will always be the, um, the person, it will always be in the ownership of the one who um, took the picture or made the video, but then kind of like having an open source license once you put it out there. Cool. Uh, any other question from anyone? Uh, cool. Uh, one another feedback um, is the uh, this time it's great that like, uh, you guys have done a uh, hackathon and then that showed like strong execution skill and then I believe like you guys gonna have a demo or sorry like a prototype uh, by this week or like a by a midterm presentation right that's great and then also another one you guys try is like bring in the influencer too right uh, that's also like a good try too but thing is the for like a next like a midterm presentation or sorry midterm pitch. You don't need to explain like why this influencer is like a right person. You just kind of like explain what's the characteristic of like these type of influencers do, right? For example, like non-stop, I guess. Uh, the one that like, you know, ex uh, alumni from like, uh, Minerva, he said, uh, you, you guys like explained today. And then he is like, you know, the, the influencer for like tourism. He has like a 50, like a like, 500, sorry. any type of like a number of like follow and subscribers. And then in the real and also like a market, this influencer is called like you know the micro like people influencers. Uh, that's like a growing for for example like hundred thousand people like a twenty percent year over year. Right? So like this the thing you wanted to explain like why this bringing like a creator could be the right solution for like this too. Right? Like why this like a type of like influencer is good. Right. So that's like a problem you need to explain clearly. You don't need to explain the rest of the stuff because it's again, if you do it, it is very difficult to finish within five minutes. But that's the difference between like a pitch and the difference between like a pitch and presentation, right? Just like I was trying to explain the one, one example, right? Cool. Uh, in that case, like let's take uh, 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 Skepti's uh, pitch today. It's gonna be a rust. I think a reason like he's probably like a stupid. Great. Um, can you guys see the screen and hear me? My headphones are a bit weird today. Yeah. Yeah. Should be fine. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um. Okay. So our pitch is slightly less developed because we've just been spending the last couple of weeks building a product. Um. We should have an MVP by. Uh, the final, uh, the midterm presentation next week. Hopefully it will be in the form of like a link that you can share and then you click it and you can just interact with it, which will be nice. Anyway, um, Skepsi, we've changed a lot of what we think about the application, um, but something that's remained the same from the beginning is that we're focused on creating better science through annotation. Um, and so we think there are two problems here or two things to be leveraged. The first, and I think we mentioned this in the first week, is that peer review is failing. Um, there are 2 million articles that are published every year. Peer review takes three to four weeks per paper and it returns a result which is binary, which is completely opaque, um, and which is typically offered by a single academic who tends to know the person who submitted the paper. And so you have this, this system which was designed for the 18th century and you have millions of academic articles. Um, and academic validity is becoming increasingly important. Of course, it's always important, but like there's been this rise in, in scientific skepticism or anti-science skepticism rather. Um, and so in addition to that, we've also seen the rise of the open science movement. And so we took a ton of data off different open science review sites, uh, specifically hypothesis, and we looked at the way that people were interacting. Um, we found that reviews tended to be around a thousand words long up to 12,000 words long. So like a very small novel in terms of length. And that they tended to be like an average of four annotations per paper on, on most papers online. And so what we found from that is that there's this entire community 
that is offering all of this academic insight in a very transparent way through comments across the entire internet, and it's not currently being leveraged. And so we thought Skepsi could be a network for academic criticism, a, cent a centralized hub for all of this discussion, organized around seminal papers. So our new idea about how the application might work um, sort of revolves around three steps. First of all, we identify the most important academic papers for us, those with implications for significant social issues like climate change or the water crisis or poverty, those where the intersection of like science and improving the world is extremely strongly felt. Uh, and we've seen that with COVID. Um, the scientific research that was produced after COVID was created, uh, after COVID wasn't created, after COVID appeared, um, it was essential in stopping the spread. And so we'll be talking to academics and doing research and trying to figure out which of those papers are most important. And then in each Skepsi event, uh, over the course of several weeks, domain experts come together from several different fields and they annotate these papers, provide critiques, provide possible implications of the results and provide context around the paper and the stuff within it. And then finally, the annotated papers are gonna be stored on a publicly accessible repository and other users can comment on them, can talk about them using a completely different annotation system. So we're trying to design something that is increasingly valid, something that allows academics and science writers to have a transparent source for addressing issues, that gives students new hypotheses to play with when they're doing graduate work, where the general public has an approachable way to deal with science and then to later on like discuss science with scientists. Um, where the contributors have a centralized forum for doing the stuff that they're already doing across the entire internet. And where hopefully science in general benefits from research that's better supported and which is more transparent. Um, and so there's lots of stuff about the way that we're going to implement this. Um, but I think the focus for us is that this is the current experience for scientific criticism. It is a, an online paper with lots of clutter with no capacity for annotation uh, or with very limited capacity for annotation. And so we've started building something that we think is a lot better in terms of user experience, in terms of interactivity, and we're going to wrap it in the framework of events so that scientists can come together around a specific topic and with a specific goal. So the first thing that we built was a world-class paper reader and annotation team. Uh, everything that you see here is done. Like we've already built it. Um, it looks pretty much like this. There are a couple more things to figure out. But the idea is that by having, um, by creating an environment that's a lot better for reading papers and discussing papers, we can incentivize users to do so. We've also got uh, a comment system, which is based around critiques that's extensible and you can collapse it and you can see different aspects of it depending on what you're interested in. Um, and finally, uh, the idea is to take these insights that individual academics are off offering and then resurfacing them at the level of the entire paper to create paper metadata. So that instead of reading through an entire paper, you can look at a single score or a histogram or a set of scores and be able to make informed decisions about whether or not something is reliable, whether it has domain importance, whether its statistics were significant and so on. So yeah, that's our current vision for Skepsi. Cool, it was uh, five minutes. Let's take uh, two questions from other teams. Anyone has any question? Yeah, go ahead, Anna. Yeah, I just wanted to ask um, about the annotation uh, tool specifically. Um, right now, what you have up and working, um, what platforms does it work with? What are some pain points that you're having with it? And um, how does it compete with, um, are, is there any competition at all for it? And how does it compete with it? Yeah, sure. Um, so it operates on our own platform. It's not like something like Hypothesis where it operates across the entire web. Um, if you want, I can just show you what it looks like. Uh, I can pull up localhost. Um, but basically the idea is, in fact, I'm not sure how much time I have. I would do it otherwise. <laughs> Um, but basically the idea is we wanted to create something that was an incredibly uncluttered reading experience that still provided all of the functionality that you need for a complex interaction like annotation. So the way it works is we have this thing called an axis. The paper exists on one side and everything else about it, its met metadata, its annotations, its information exists on the other. Um, most of it is contextually available through this thing that we're calling the tooltip. Um, it sort of matches where the user is in the document and it scrolls to that position and you can click different buttons on it to see things like an interactable table of contents or the figures. And then there's a space for the annotations, um, which is a, which 
supports the entire annotation system and you can resize it dynamically so that if you wanted, the paper could be one third of the page and the annotations could be two thirds, or you could push the annotations completely off to the side and just have an uncluttered reading experience. Any other questions? Nemosan, do you have any comment? No, I think uh, yeah. Well, in that case, like, I'm just gonna give you like one feedback. Um, you you guys think like, a problem set was uh was good. Also, like an insight that you guys got it too, right? How many like a comment like they give for like an average uh, paper and then. Uh, how many, uh, like, you know, the, the, the words too, right? Like up to like a 4,000 to like a 3,000 four comments for the each uh, paper. And that was like a good insight that you guys uh, uh, got it. Another one is the probably like a slide uh, six to eight. I feel like a, that information was a little bit redundant because you expect what's like a skepticism that you guys can do. And then you list like a three information too, right? And after that, basically you explain the three main, three main features, uh, three main features too, right? So. Instead, of like you guys probably get the side six, you can add like a the image of like a scapsy, what's the one liner, and then let me explain what's the key features we, we have built, right? Like feature one, this, two, three, right? That's like a gives like a clear image too. I think it's like an also like a product uh, 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 image was clear enough for me to understand the, like how I can use uh, this product. It's kind of like a better version, like a Google version for like a scientist, right? For example. That's like I can do like a much more like a customization. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Most. Um, I cannot talk right now. Okay. Cool. Um, I think that that's that was a good uh, um, uh, pitch. Anyone has any comment or questions to Skepsi? No. All right. Cool. In that case, if if anyone has like you no know, still question for the midterm presentation or he wanted to go through the pitch i can just stay like in this uh, link like a 30 minutes more so we can like go through your pitch if you wanted to do it again all right and just gonna like, finish the recording